Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna explain any possible causes uh, for no cranking. So if you cannot crank the engine, this video is for you and I'm gonna explain any single possible cause that can cause no cranking at all. So let's watch the video to the end. Maybe it can help you in this situation. The first thing that you need to check is on your battery, you're gonna need to make sure that all the battery cables are tight and secure, positive and negative, and they are not contaminated. Just in case, if you see contamination right here, you're gonna need to uh, make sure that they are completely clean and all the battery cables, battery positive and negative, they are uh, tight and secure. You're gonna need to make sure that the battery is fully charged as well. A fully charged battery should have 12.6 volts. I'm gonna show you right now how to check the battery voltage using a multimeter. But if you don't have the multimeter, you can just use the built-in hydrometer. So if the built-in hydrometer shows you green color, it means the battery is fully charged. If it is not, you might need to recharge the battery or replace it. Okay, here is my battery. I'm gonna grab the multimeter. The first step is to check the battery voltage. So select the voltage on your multimeter. Red lead on battery positive and black lead on battery negative. So as you see, I'm getting 12.2. So you wanna make sure that the battery is not flat and it can crank your engine. If battery voltage is okay, you're gonna need to check if your car has uh, ignition switch fuse all right this is the engine fuse box and on this car I have ignition switch fuse which is right here 20 amp so basically here is my ignition switch fuse and if I locate it here it's gonna be this 20 amp fuse so I can test it with a test lamp on your test lamp connect the ground to a good ground grab the test lamp and check the fuse right and the other side as well you should have the voltage on each side of the fuse otherwise uh, the fuse is broken and you have to replace it with the brand new one most of the time inside the fuse box you have some spare fuses that you can use it for these situations for example on this fuse box as you see I have some spare fuses here which are located right here on the fuse box 10 amp 20 amp and 30 amp fuse on the fuse box that you can use just in case that you have any blown fuse. One of the very common problems when you can't crank the engine is on a starting system. So basically, find the engine fuse box and locate the starter relay. In this case, my starter relay here, which is this one. The easiest way, the quick fix is when you are not sure if the starter relay is okay or not, you can just swap it with another identical relay. So I'm gonna go for one relay, which is not really important at this time. So maybe headlamp, because I just wanna make sure if uh, the starter relay is okay or not. So I can swap it with another another relay headlamp, high or low, just for, just for now, because I just need the starter relay to be working when I want to crank the engine. Obviously, after engine is started, I can swap the relays back into place. So this is my starter relay. And if you check the numbers, they are exactly the same relays. They are identical relays, so I can swap them to see if I can uh, crank the engine. Of course, you can test the relays with the multimeter as well. So if you want to check the starter relay with the multimeter, please check the description. We have a video for checking the relays, so you can use that video for inspecting the relays. If you don't have any identical relay, you can simply jump the relay to make sure a starting system is working or not. On any relay, if you look at here, there are some numbers. You're going to need to find these two pins 87 and 30 all right so you're gonna need to jump between these two all right to make sure the starting system is working or not so you just need to grab a piece of wire you need to do this job very careful simply jump between 30 and 87. it is also important to make sure that the power supply is provided on the relay select the voltage on your multimeter put the black lead on the ground and check the voltage right here on the fuse box. As you see, I'm getting the battery voltage. So you wanna make sure that you have the battery voltage right here on the fuse box. And of course, you're gonna need to check the ground 
provided for the relay as well. On some starting system, this ground is provided from ECM, uh, but on some others, this ground is provided directly from the body ground. So what I do on this car is provided directly from the body ground. So I select resistance. I change the function to continuity. Test it. Continuity works. Black lead on the ground and check the ground from here. You should hear the tone. If you hear in the tone, it means the ground is provided. If you are not hearing the tone, you need to check the wind dog ram to make sure if the ground is provided from ECM or from the body ground. If it is provided from the body ground and you are not hearing the tone, it means uh, there is something wrong with that ground that you're gonna need to check it. But if it is provided from ECM, you can check the wiring between this one and between the engine control module. When you have no cranking, the problem could be from the starter motor itself. So first of all, you need to locate the starter motor itself. Then this is the starter solenoid, this is the starter motor. So all the connections are already on the starter solenoid. So make sure all the cables are connected properly. There is one small connector here, which is coming from the starter relay. If this one is unplugged, loose or dirty, you won't be able to crank the engine. Just make sure this small connector on the solenoid is connected properly. This cable is coming from the battery. If this one is loose or disconnected, obviously you won't be able to crank the engine. Just make sure this one is connected properly as well. And the other connection takes the power from the solenoid to the starter motor. Just make sure the other one is connected properly as well. You may have some problem on, on the solenoid itself or on the starter motor. So you can find another video in the description for uh, inspecting and testing the starter solenoid itself. If your car has automatic transmission, you're gonna need to make sure that gear shifter is placed on park or neutral because you won't be able to crank the engine when transmission is on reverse or drive. As you see, no cranking right now. And as soon as I put the transmission on park, I can start the engine. And if your car has manual transmission, you might need to press the clutch pedal for cranking the engine because on some of them, clutch switch is actually a part of the starting system. And if you don't press the clutch pedal, you won't be able to crank the engine. There is another part of the automatic transmission, which is important for starting the car. And that one is inhibitor switch or transmission wrench switch. So basically if inhibitor switch is faulty or if it is not adjusted properly, you won't be able to crank the engine again. Uh, most of the time, the most common problem for that one is when inhibitor switch needs to be adjusted. And basically this is the procedure to adjust the inhibitor switch on uh, many cars. On some cars like Ford, if you have any problem on the CAN bus, it means the network or immobilizer system, you won't be able to crank the engine as well, but it doesn't happen so often. So basically what you need to check, the first priority is to check the battery voltage. If there is any problem with the ignition switch fuse, then go for starter relay try to swap the starter relay with another one maybe that one works this is the most common one uh, take care about the location of your gear shifter make sure it's on the park or neutral you're gonna need to inspect the transmission inhibitor switch if that one is not adjusted obviously you won't be able to crank the engine as well and a starter itself is really important to be uh, inspected i hope this video helps you guys thank you very much for watching